Hey everybody, uh, today we're going to talk about a common method for tracking time as you're collecting data. So when you go to collect data using an analog to digital converter, you may want to have a timestamp associated with each sample or a period that you're sampling. And the common way to do that is using something called the Unix timestamp. And so I went to unixtimestamp.com and to show you what this means is there is an integer value associated with, with uh, time the time in seconds since January the 1st, 1970, and that's called Unix time. And uh, to show you how that works, I can just dial in today's date, June 1st, and even put uh, an hour here. It's 9 a.m., and I'll do the conversion. And then now that is equal to this time timestamp here, this integer value. So that's that's pretty cool. So in our data set that we've been working on, there is a column called time, and it has a Unix time step number there and we need to convert that into a human readable code so that we can parse on it and understand uh, how to slice up our data and analyze the data. So let's do that real quick. I will launch um, my Jupyter notebook since I like to work with June, the Jupyter notebook when I'm doing data frame and pandas data. So I have my notebooks are right here. So I'll just go ahead and launch that. And, oops, sorry guys, I want to do a new application, so I'll start a new application. And uh, let's, let's name this uh, Unix Time Converter, and um, go ahead and start off. So the, what I need to do is I'm going to do some data frames work, so I'm going to load in, I'm going to import pandas as PD, and to run that cell, we just hit shift enter, so I've run the cell, and now if you guys remember, there's an easy way to load in uh, data. In this case, I know my data is uh, is in CVS format, comma, rated, comma separated value CSV format. So let's do that. And I don't exactly remember the path location, but to show you how to do that, I can come up here and I can get my path location directly. And here's the file, ppg underscore data, where I put it. And before we do that, let's just show what the data looks like. So I'm going to launch the comma separated values file and so we can see in row one we have all of the labels and then here is where we have our unix time and you can see that it's this number that represents the time since 1970 the second since 1970. so let's let's go ahead and close that uh, don't save and then let me get that location of that file again so there is the location of the file and i'm going to load in this data underscore six dot csv file so let me copy that, and then I can put that into my code here, and then I want to get data underscore six dot comma separated values. Now, this is interesting. Let's go ahead and run this, and I'll show you the error that occurs because we have this backslash in here, and that is not interpreted by Python because backslash is an escape means escape code is next. So if you remember, if we do backslash n, that's a new line access T is a tab, so we can't use the backslash. We have to put the data in there properly. So how would we do this? Let's just, let's just do this. Let's copy this error here and just see what we get if we, do, if we search for that error online. And amazingly, uh, at stackoverflow.com, somebody has documented this error. In fact, most errors in Python have been documented in this way if you search on the error. So I would encourage you to do that. So how Stack Overflow works is they describe the problem and then they there's 10 answers to this and this one was upvoted 255 times so it's a good answer so it's monitored by the community and managed by the community and they give three ways to read it in. Uh, you can use this rstring method and then you can leave in um, the you can use uh, back the backslash so let's just let's just use that method because that looks pretty simple. The, the other method I like to use is, is to just go ahead and realize that okay that means backslash means that the next thing is an escape code and oh Backslash is the escape code for black backslash, so I often use this method. But let's let's try this method here with the R. So I'll just copy over this, and this is called an R string. And let me get back to the right place. Sorry, and we'll just do the R string here, and then now we should be able to load in that file. Boom, no errors. And let's go ahead and add a cell, and then see what the, this data file looks like. Shift Enter, and now we can see our labels, and then the data. And we want to pick off that that column right there. Um, first, I'm going to make sure that my column, what my column labels are, 
um, I understand exactly how they're written and how they've been described in the system. And if you remember, there's this little extra space here on this kind of tricky hunt. This is the way that the data collection was set up for all of our files. So we have to realize that um, you can fix that with some commands, but I've got used to working with this. So we actually want to pick off this data time column here and to be able to analyze that or convert that that uh, number into a human readable time. So let's go ahead and do that. I know of a uh, import module off the top of my head we can use, but let's let's see if we can find something online as if you didn't know exactly what the import module was. So if I um, go up and I type in, let's go ahead and type in um, what we're looking for, a Unix time converter, Python, and let's use our friends over at Stack Overflow again. Type that in and then I can go see if there's a solution there. And sure enough, somebody's documented. So here is, they're describing their problem. And then if I go down and here they're saying there's answers and this one's been upvoted 1200 times. So that uh, seems like a pretty good solution. So let's, let's do this. Let's just go ahead and copy this. And we'll put that into our Juniper uh, notebook. And let's work with that. Now we need to change a few things. So we need to import this module called date time. And then we want to con convert, it looks like convert this, the number, if it's a string, into an int, and then pass that into the date time function and a method that says string rf time. And so it's going to output this string formatted time in this, in this way. Let's just go ahead and run this and see if this works. Oh, it outputs uh, the data. And this was, what is that, September 2010. Let's go ahead and see if we can copy our number here. We just drop that in here and run that again. Wow, that's great. So it, it takes the number, TS is what we're calling this. I wonder what would happen if we would put in uh, just the string. I'm sure it's going to be an error. Let's just show what that error would be. So if we, we put, dropped in the number that was exactly the string into this format and ran that, that's going to give us an error. So if you encounter errors out of range, error timestamp, maybe in milliseconds. So it's, that's not exactly what it's telling us. Ah, an integer is required. So we need to convert that always to the integer. So let's put TS back in there. So that's a way that you can use the error codes is if you interpret them and it gives you some hints, you can go and find that. So what we need to do is we want to take this Unix time and convert it into a human readable time. And then we can then analyze what happened on an hourly basis, for example. I'm actually going to ask you to do that in your project. So let's uh, do a new cell here and look at a few ways that we can manipulate this data. So if I wanted to say, and remember that the name of my data frame is data, and I wanted to just pull off the, the time uh, column, I could do this, right? And then if we do, if we run this code, we can see that I've got all of those Unix times. Now this thing has got nearly 4,000 rows in it. And if we wanted to, to just get row zero, we could do this, right? So that gives row zero. Now remember that there's a couple of other methods that we could use also. So if I wanted to use the location method, which basically says, give me the row and the notate, the syntax is the row and then the column, but it's, it's not looking for the integers, but in our case, the, the row doesn't have a name. And you can have a name for each of the rows here. We just are using the index value. And it just happens that we also have a column called index in our code. So we really have two indexes here within, within our data that we've collected. So let's say lo, use the loc method. I want row zero and I want the column with time in it. And see, let's see uh, what that comes out to be here. So let's run that. And it gets the same, same number. So we expected, uh, we expected the same number, but to show that even more clearly, I'll come down and do another uh, cell here, and let's do data. In this case, let's do iLook, which means integer location, and then once again, we're row zero, column five. And column five, I know that because it's zero, one, two, three, four, five. I didn't, didn't access, I didn't count the initial one here because that's the built-in data frame index uh, indexer right there. So I started over and this is the, the data that's read from our Excel spreadsheet or our common separated value spreadsheet. Zero, one, two, three, four, five is where time is located. So uh, let's do that. And I've got an error in my iLoc 
and I've got a misspelling there, so let's do that. So we, we got the integer number back, and then if we wanted to convert that, we would do exactly what we did up here. So we take this, and what we can do is we can just say ts is equal to this, and then we want to say the int of ts. ts is an int of this. Can cast the string data into an int and then pass that in. And then now we can see that that data was collected on October 24th, 2019. Now, if we want to go all the way to milliseconds, we can do that as well. I could add milliseconds in there too. And add it on even to milliseconds. So in your project, you will be looking at this time data, and I'm going to ask you to pull off all of the time from a certain hour. So here's 2100 hours, and what does that convert into? What is that? Uh, 12 plus 9 is 21, so it's 9 p.m. when this data was, was collected, for example. So that's how you convert uh, Unix time into human-readable time. And until next time, I'll talk to you soon.